Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Kirstie Partang and I am a PhD candidate at SOAS, the School for Oriental and African Studies, which is at the University of London, and I'm in the Department of Development Studies. I also run the NANA Project, an online platform dedicated to preserving Ghana's history through the voices of Ghanaian elders. My presentation is titled, Digital Diaspora's Digital Histories, Preserving Ghana's Past in the Digital Age. In this presentation, I will discuss how the NANA Project uses digital history to connect Ghanaians around the world and how initiatives like the NANA Project are using the internet to make history more accessible. The NANA Project has four aims. First, decolonize African history through the use of personal narratives. Second, increase accessibility to information on African history. Third, preserve African history in modern formats. And fourth, reclaim the legacy of oral storytelling from our elders through crowdsourcing personal histories. Oops, sorry. The, the themes that can be found on the platform reflect the, reflect the age range and the life experiences of the Ghanaian elders we speak with. We call them our storytellers. Storytellers are asked a variety of questions, including information on their life growing up and what they can remember from different parts of Ghana's history. The oldest person we've interviewed was born in 1929, and the youngest person was born in 1969. So far, the main themes that have emerged on our platform are around life in colonial Ghana, or the Gold Coast, rather, um, Ghana's independence, Kwame Nkrumah's coup d'etat, who was the first president of Ghana, Ghana Must Go, and life in Ghana during the politically and economically tumultuous period of the 1970s and 1980s. The NANA project is truly a digital project, as nearly every aspect of it is online. The main platform is the website, and this is a photo from the homepage, um, where we host our video recorded interviews, which are linked from YouTube, written interviews, audio recorded interviews, and old photos that are crowdsourced from our social media platforms. And we also use social media to share the stories we collect from Ghanaian elders, share information on Ghana's history, and encourage Ghanaians to have conversations with elders and their families about their family history. This is an example of a post we use to ask members of our online community to, contrib to contribute to the NANA project. And this is a photo um, submitted by someone who saw a post that was similar to the one you, I just showed. Um, they saw the post for submissions and decided to submit something. And this particular photo is of her great grandmother who is um, pictured at the far right. And this was taken at a Presbyterian basal mission in a town in the central region of Ghana. And this photo was taken somewhere between 1894 and 1898. I decided to put the NANA project online because one, we are in the digital age, and this is the main way information is shared now. And also because I wanted to make this information as accessible as possible. Some archives are accessible only through academic institutions. And if you aren't affiliated with an academic institution, gaining access to materials in the archives can be challenging. And also sometimes people just feel like academia is not accessible to them if they, aren't at, if they aren't in academia or affiliated with the institution. Now, putting this information online increases accessibility and crowdsourcing the information by asking people to contribute from their own family archives helps people feel a sense of ownership with the archive, which I personally think is also an important part of accessibility. We've received submissions from Ghanaians both inside and outside of Ghana our followers in our online community are Ghanaians in Ghana, Ghanaians in the diaspora, as well as people from the global African diaspora, as well as people who just have a general interest in African history. Um, as I previously stated, uh, we use social media to share information and facts about Ghana's history. Social media has given the NANA project and similar, project, similar projects the platform to share information with people who may not have learned said information otherwise. For us, this is confirmed by the number of I didn't know this, thank you for sharing comments and messages we receive. It also shows that there's a desire among people to know more about their history, and social media is helping community projects like the NANA Project meet this need. So in closing, I wanted to give you all a question to think about. Um, while 
the NANA project um, is about Ghana's history. This platform really is about um, archiving family histories. So I wanted to invite you all to just take a moment to think about your family's history by thinking about these questions. Do you know the answers to these questions? If no, who can you ask to find the answer? If yes, what else can you learn about your, your great-grandmother? And through her, what else can you learn about your family history? Thank you. Thank you.